Welcome to our Minchin Computer Talk on auditing the biases enacted by YouTube for political topics in Germany. My name is Hendrik Heuer and I'm presenting joint work with Hendrik Hoch, Andreas Breiter and Janis Theocharis. In this paper, we focus on YouTube, a website with more than 2 billion users per month. 70% of the videos that are watched on YouTube are recommended by a machine learning based curation system. And this is remarkable and noteworthy because every fourth person worldwide relies on YouTube as a news source. The percentage is even higher for younger people. Every third 18 to 24 year old consumes his or her news on YouTube. This means that YouTube's machine learning based curation system plays an important role in what billions of people watch and how they see the world. Now, why is machine learning needed in such systems? because there are 82.2 years of video uploaded to YouTube every day. That's about 500 hours of video uploaded per minute. For a team of human experts, it would be impossible to review and categorize this user-generated content. YouTube markets its recommender system as a, quote, sophisticated algorithm to match each viewer to the videos they're most likely to watch and enjoy. We will show you in the presentation through our audit that popular unrelated content is king. Research has pointed out the social, political and cultural importance of machine learning based systems. Zeynep Tufeki, for instance, wrote in the New York Times that YouTube may be one of the most powerful radicalizing instruments of the 21st century. So the goal of our investigation is to understand radicalization. To thoroughly do that, and how it influences the behavior of users, research has to show that YouTube is presenting users with increasingly extreme content, that this extreme content negatively affects their attitudes, that this affects their intentions, and that this changes their behavior. Now, in this investigation, we can only focus on the first part, which is whether YouTube is presenting users with increasingly extreme content. Facebook received a lot of attention regarding algorithmic awareness, user beliefs about the system, how its system works, and the biases that the system enacts. Meanwhile, especially when we started, there was comparatively little research on YouTube despite its importance. There's a lot of discussion about so-called filter bubbles. Parisa uses this term to describe the phenomenon that users are presented with more and more content that corresponds to their opinions. Filter bubbles are not a problem per se. If we have a recommendation system for music, it may be very much appreciated if somebody who likes to listen to Bob Dylan has recommended other folk music, for instance, Woody Guthrie. With news, however, this can become a serious problem. If somebody watches a video about immigrants who commit crimes and is then shown many other videos of the combination immigrants and crime, this could potentially have a strong influence on the opinions of the person. Yet the videos that YouTube recommends may only be the result of a co-production between the actions of the user and the ability of the recommendation system to serve a perceived interest. And this socio-technical understanding is the first important contribution of our paper. The basic assumption of this socio-technical perspective is that the combination of user and technology is more than the sum of its parts. That's why we have to look at both at the same time. Now what motivated us to investigate political topics in Germany were the incidents in Chemnitz. As a reminder, during a city festival a man was killed by stab wounds to other people who were seriously injured. And this incident led to demonstrations by right-wing and far-right groups who marched against immigration and immigrants. According to a report in the New York Times, many citizens joined the right-wing marches after learning about the events on YouTube and after seeing recommendations that were increasingly radical right-wing. These incidents motivated us to deeply investigate the recommendations that are provided by YouTube for political topics. We do this by answering the following three research questions. The first research question is, how does the popularity of recommended videos as measured by views and likes, change between recommendations. The second research question is, do the recommendations stay on topic or can a topic drift be observed? 
we performed audits to investigate whether YouTube is recommending increasingly radical videos on various political topics. For this, we developed a bot which simulates YouTube users. This bot randomly selects one of nine political topics and then independently enters the topic into the YouTube search bar. The bot then randomly selects one of the top 10 search results and watches the video for a random number of seconds. The bot then again randomly selects one of the top 10 recommendations displayed in the right sidebar next to the video. This random selection of recommendations is then repeated 10 times. For the investigation, we used nine political topics from a representative telephone poll conducted on behalf of the VDR. The topics include asylum and refugees, trade conflict with the US, digitalization, protection against crime, climate change and the energy transformation, social policy, in particular the pensions, the creation of affordable housing, school and education, and the situation in elderly care. The audits revealed that the recommendations become significantly more popular measured by views and likes. A steep increase from the initial videos to the recommendations can be observed. Recommendations also become significantly less related to political topics. For this, three independent raters who did not know the goals of the investigation watched the videos and rated the topic similarity to the nine political topics that we investigated. We find that recommendations become significantly less related to political topics. The median topic similarity rating of the initial videos was 8. This decreased dramatically to 0.8 after following only 5 recommendations. Similarity remains very low for the 10th recommendations with a median rating of 1. A two-tailed man with a new test indicated that the topics in the videos changed between the initial videos and the 5th recommendations and between the initial videos and the 10th recommendations. All the results indicate a strong topic drift. Let's now consider the third research question. How does the emotional content of the videos change between recommendations? We find that the happiness in the videos increases while the sadness decreases. The happiness changes from a median of 0.0, .0 for the initial videos to a median of 2 for the 5th and 10 recommendations. While 75% of initial videos have a happiness rating between 0 and 2, more than half of the 5th and 10th recommendations have a happiness rating higher than 2. Regarding the sadness evoked by the videos, the trend is opposite. The median ratings in the box plot in the figure move from 1.67 for the initial videos down to 0 for 5th and 0.3 for the 10th recommendations. While more than half of the initial videos have a sadness rating higher than 1.67, 75% of the 10th recommendations have a rating smaller than 1. Overall, in contrast to what the New York Times reported, our findings suggest that the dangers of YouTube as an online radicalization tool may be exaggerated. We find that YouTube is not pushing users towards politically extreme content by consistently suggesting more extreme videos. YouTube is also not leading users down a rabbit hole, zooming in on a specific political topic. What we find instead is that YouTube is pushing increasingly more popular content as measured by the number of views and likes. The sadness evoked by the videos decreases significantly while the happiness increases. This could mean that popularity, as measured by likes and views, is the defining factor for selecting recommendations. If this is the case, then minority views are not adequately taken into account by the recommendation system. Controversial political topics require a balanced presentation of all arguments in a way that weighs the pros and cons. The curation system on YouTube may not be suited to help users inform themselves about complex political issues. If minority views are not taken into account by the machine learning based curation system, this is an important and pressing issue from a democratic point of view. With our investigation, we corroborate Smith et al., who performed more than 175,000 random walks and analyzed more than 346,000 unique recommended videos. However, Smith et al.'s audit exhibits a strong popularity bias since they use videos from the 14,000 most popular English language YouTube channels with at least 250,000 subscribers. We corroborate their findings in the context of German political topics and in a setting that is much closer to a typical YouTube watching session.
And the random walks by Smith et al. were also criticized as artificial because they relied on YouTube's API. We use Selenium to provide a bot that actually resembles a user. We find that YouTube may be a prime example of a recentering of public engagement around the complementary interests of the broad majority and profitability. This connects to Harper's investigation of the big data public and its problem. Because from a platform perspective, where longer watch times result in more shown ads, which lead to more money, it may make sense to provide more and more popular videos. At the same time, we cannot rule out that a rabbit hole effect exists for a particular subset of users and topics, especially for those users who are actively looking for fringe content. A 2017 study of 29 million YouTube viewing sessions provides further evidence that YouTube's algorithm may not be radicalizing people. They find no evidence that engagement with far-right content is caused by YouTube recommendations systematically. This, of course, does not mean that there are not major issues with extreme content in YouTube and other platforms, only that the machine learning-based curation system may not be the most likely culprit for producing extremism. We encourage researchers to perform more audits of YouTube and other platforms. We're particularly interested in TikTok, a platform where the algorithm has an even stronger role than on YouTube. We recommend the audits performed by the Wall Street Journal in 2019 to investigate TikTok's algorithm and how it, for instance, shows depression-related content to people who show signs of depression. Thank you very much for your attention.